Hello everyone. Thank you for joining me again. Today I want to share with you some recipes for a winter dinner that you and I can enjoy in front of the fire. I am serving a gorgeous green broccoli puree with optional goat cheese for the first course, meltingly tender Salisbury steaks with mashed potatoes and green beans for the main course, and a perfectly perfumed pink champagne cake for the grand finale. In addition to making dinner, I also need to bring Miss Avery for a walk. Does that sound like a good plan? And to buy some inexpensive flowers that you and I can arrange for the parlor mantle. So please walk, shop, and cook dinner with me. I think we will have a great time together. Right, Avery? We are going to start with the pink champagne cake. So what I have here is three and a half cups of all-purpose or plain flour. I did weigh this out. It is 455 grams. To the flour, I am adding one teaspoon of baking soda, a half teaspoon of baking powder, and three-fourths of a teaspoon of table salt. And then I whisk these ingredients to combine them. I'm going to mix the batter in my KitchenAid, but you can absolutely use a large bowl and electric beaters. And into the mixer goes one cup or 227 grams of butter, soft into room temperature. My butter had not softened, so I popped it in the microwave for a little too long. So it's slightly melted, but that would be fine. You can use salted or unsalted butter here. Now I will add two cups or 400 grams of regular granulated sugar. And I will beat the butter and sugar together at high speed until the mixture turns pale and fluffy. That will take about five minutes. One at a time, beat in four large eggs that are at room temperature. Then beat in one cup or 240 grams of full fat sour cream, followed by two teaspoons of pure vanilla extract and one teaspoon of either rose water or strawberry extract. I am using rose water today because it offers a glorious perfume. Now I'm going to add the dry ingredients in alternating additions with the pink champagne. This is Rosa Regale Italian Sparkling Rosé. You will need one cup or 240 mils of the champagne or sparkling rosé wine or Prosecco. You want to add the flour at low speed. Now I'm adding about half of the champagne. The batter is turning bubbly. really foaming, and the remaining flour. Scrape down the bowl. I love the rose perfume in this batter. This next step is entirely up to you. I'm going to add a touch of pink food coloring. This is not turning the least bit pink, so I'm going to add a bit of red. That ought to do it. We got pink. This cake practically screams Valentine's Day. I shall clear the decks and then we can pour the batter into the pan. 
Now, the last time that you and I made a bundt cake, I had a little stickage on the side. So I did some research, and one of the tips I found was that you should only grease and flour the pan immediately before you fill it. If you grease the pan before you start the recipe, the grease can settle at the bottom and you have no coverage on the sides. And I left myself a sticky note reminding me to grease it because I am very forgetful. And I will grease and flour my pan the easy way with baking spray, which contains flour. Another tip I learned was immediately before the cake goes into the oven, bang the pan down a few times to release air bubbles. I will bake this beauty until a skewer inserted into the center of the cake comes out clean. That will take about one hour. While the cake is baking, I'm going to go ahead and make the first course soup, which is actually a broccoli puree. Now, I've seen a lot of broccoli soup recipes. Most of them have 100 ingredients. They are beige in appearance, and in my opinion, rather unappetizing looking. This one is just broccoli, water, and salt. So I have two medium crowns of broccoli here. One large crown of broccoli is probably enough. And I'm just cutting this into florets. I will freeze the stock. This recipe is inspired by one I saw from Gordon Ramsay, and I will link that recipe in the description below. Add a generous amount of salt to a large pot of boiling water. Add the broccoli florets and then cover the pot and cook until the florets are perfectly tender, about four minutes. Let's test the broccoli. Oh, this is perfectly tender. Now I will fish out the broccoli florets and transfer them to the jar of my blender. See how bright green the broccoli is? And I am receiving a lovely broccoli facial. I may have to add more salt to this. Salt is really the only seasoning in this soup. So it is a very pure broccoli soup. I want a thick puree, so I am only going to add a small amount of water. We will see how thick the puree is, and if we need to add more of this broccoli stock, we will. I'm going to pulse the machine first, and then I will blitz the broccoli. Look at this beautiful green color. That's exactly what I wanted. It's very thick. I do want to have a quick taste. Tastes like broccoli. I think it needs a little more salt. To my surprise, this turned out to be one of the best first course soups I have ever made. Clean spoon. Oh, this is lovely. This is probably the easiest soup I have ever made in my life. And it will be great as a first course soup because it's not heavy with a lot of other ingredients.
This is the kind of puree that you could serve hot, warm, or even cold from the fridge. I'm going to transfer it to my soup pot here. Look at that color. No food coloring required for this puree. And I just had a thought. This would be a great soup to serve for St. Patrick's Day. It's shamrock green. I will let this cool to room temperature and then I will cover the pot and refrigerate it until I'm ready to serve. I need to clean up my workstation and then I want to bring Avery for a walk and I hope you will join us. Just be sure to wear boots. There's quite a bit of snow outside. We came back in the nick of time. My oven was dinging. Let's check on our cake. This cake smells just amazing. I will let it cool in the pan for about 10 minutes and then we can unmold it. Please wish me luck. Voila! Virtually no sticking whatsoever. So I think the trick is to grease and flour the bunt pan immediately before you fill it. I need to let this cool to room temperature before I can glaze it. Meantime, let's get started on the Salisbury steak recipe. What I have here is one pound of 85% lean ground beef, so it's 15% fat. And to this, I'm going to add one large beaten egg, two tablespoons of ketchup, or slightly more or slightly less, a tablespoon of Worcester sauce, a teaspoon of dry mustard, a teaspoon of tamari sauce, or you could use soy sauce, grinds of black pepper, and three quarters to one cup of plain breadcrumbs. That's about 90 grams. And then we have to mix this up by hand. And I like to wear food prep gloves. For this job. 
the nice thing about Salisbury steaks is that you can prepare the hamburger mixture well ahead of time because it actually benefits from at least one hour in the refrigerator. Or you could leave the hamburger mixture in the refrigerator overnight. And I'm going to let mine chill. Meantime, let's run to the supermarket. I want to buy some inexpensive flowers to make a little arrangement. Full stop. Can't believe I live in your thoughts. I think about you all the time, morning, evening, and midnight. Such a wonderful delight. Forgo. Give up everything that I. going to make this arrangement in my soup tureen here and to hold the flowers and greens in place I have some chicken wire. Chicken wire is a little harder to work with than oasis or wet foam but we will make it work. This is boxwood that I just clipped from the garden. As you can see there's still snow attached to some of the stems. I have already added water to the terrain. I am definitely not a professional flower arranger. I just like to surround myself with beautiful things. I will put this on the mantle in front of the mirror so that the mirror makes this arrangement look twice as big as it actually is. I'm going to clean up my mess here. And by the way, any leftover flowers will be turned into a little bouquet from my bedroom. Who doesn't want a flower arrangement in their bedroom? Back to the Salisbury steaks. Now this hamburger mixture has chilled for a good hour. And again, you could let this chill overnight. And I forgot to mention that I have another recipe for Salisbury steaks that I filmed, oh, three or four years ago. Those steaks were wonderful. Today I am following a recipe that is very similar to the one from Chef John. Now I want to make four patties. The patties should be about a half inch thick. And I like to form them into an oval shape so that they kind of, sort of, resemble steaks. There's only two of us for dinner tonight, so I will have some nice leftovers to freeze and to enjoy 
for a future meal. Time to brown these patties. I want to brown these patties in some of the beautiful Amish butter that you and I bought at the general store last week. I will also add just a drizzle of olive oil. I'm going to cook these until they are nicely browned on each side. That will take four to five minutes. Now I am only browning these patties. They will finish cooking in the gravy that we're going to make next. So I have removed the patties set them aside, and then we are going to make the fabulous mushroom gravy that the patties will finish cooking in. So I have about 14 large button mushrooms. I'm just slicing them. It's a lot of mushrooms. It's time to make the gravy. I will go over the ingredients as we use them. To make the gravy, put two tablespoons of butter in a large skillet set over medium heat. When the butter melts, add the mushrooms, one diced onion, and a sprinkling of salt. Saute until the mushrooms have released their moisture and the mixture looks rather dry. Then stir in two tablespoons of flour and continue stirring for one minute just to cook the flour. Then stir in three cups or 700 mils of beef broth, two tablespoons of ketchup, and one tablespoon of Worcester sauce. Bring this to a simmer and then reduce the heat and cook while stirring slowly until the gravy thickens slightly and reduces. Return the hamburger patties to the skillet and cook while basting the patties with the luxurious sauce until the patties are cooked through. These Salisbury steaks are done when they achieve 160 degrees Fahrenheit or 70 degrees Celsius. That will take about five minutes. I will cover the Salisbury steak and keep it warm in a 200 degree Fahrenheit or 90 degree Celsius oven until we are ready to dine. Let me clean up my workstation and then we need to glaze the cake and build a fire. I will make a very simple glaze for this cake but in order to avoid making a mess on my cake stand, I'm going to slip some strips of parchment under the cake. For the glaze, I need one and a half cups of sifted confectioner's sugar. That's about 125 grams. Then I need just enough water to create a smooth, pourable glaze. So we will start with three tablespoons of water. You can already tell, I will need another tablespoon or so. I also want to add a half teaspoon of pure vanilla extract. And because it's February, the month of Valentine's Day, I'm going to add a little pink food coloring. This pink food coloring doesn't do much of anything. I'm going to add red, just a tiny amount. You can always add more, but you cannot take any away. Look at this. And on to the cake it goes. And there we have it. A beautiful pink champagne cake. 
I'm going to let this glaze set for a few minutes and then I will pull out the strips of parchment. Meantime, let's head into the parlor. When we are ready to dine, I heat the broccoli puree on the stovetop. Taking a cue from Gordon Ramsay, I put two slices of goat cheese in the bottom of each soup cup and then add the hot puree and garnish with coarse grinds of black pepper. Cannot wait to tuck into this soup. You would not believe how magnificent this soup is. And the soup is what? Nothing more than broccoli, water, salt. Yes, I added some goat cheese at the bottom per Gordon Ramsay's instruction but I'm not even at that goat cheese yet. This just tastes like pure, unadulterated broccoli. I really love it. I don't see any reason to add garlic or onion or anything else to this puree. Now the goat cheese has melted at the bottom. I just stirred it up. The goat cheese adds a wonderful tang. I will link this recipe in the description below. I am serving the Salisbury steaks and mushroom gravy with the sides of mashed potatoes and sautéed green beans. These are the green beans that you and I planted, harvested, blanched, and froze last autumn. Now for the main course Salisbury steak with mashed potatoes and garden-grown green beans. Now, I think my own recipe for Salisbury steak is great, but I think that Chef John's is even better. And I will post a link to that recipe in the description below. Holy cow, this is wonderful. The meat is super tender. The gravy over the meat is perfectly seasoned. I just love it. And by the way, many of you have asked me to mention the type of wine that I am serving with these meals. Tonight, I am having a full-bodied Cabernet. It goes really well with the broccoli soup as well as the main course Salisbury steak. And here comes the pink champagne cake. Pink champagne to accompany our pink champagne cake. Now this is the first time that I have made this cake with rose water instead of strawberry extract. I don't think you need me to tell you just how delicious this cake is. It's moist, it's perfumed, 
it's sweet, but not overly sweet. I just love everything about it. And who is going to resist a dessert that is called pink champagne cake? Not me. Well, I hope you will try one or all of these make-ahead recipes someday. I think this would be a fine dinner to serve for Valentine's Day, or really any day of the year. Also, thank you for spending time with me. I cannot tell you how much I appreciate your company. I can put a couple of my other videos up here and up here that you can enjoy between now and my next upload. Until then, please treat yourself well, and I will see you in the next episode. Chin chin.